Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX. Thanks for joining me today. And it is the start of May. In fact, looking at the date, it's more like the start of the middle of May. But the sporadic E season, uh, particularly on the six metre band, but also the four uh, and two metre bands, is really starting to pick up now. And while I have a V2000 on the roof of my house, which I have to be honest is performing particularly well when it comes to making a few FTA contacts, it made me think that it would be good if I had something uh, portable-ish that I could put up in the back garden uh, and take down again. Now I had a couple of thoughts when it came to this particular antenna. I thought, well, I could go down the uh, Slim Jim route. That's fine. I've probably got some, uh, some ladder line that I can make it out of. I also thought I could make a flower pot, um, which would also work quite nicely. Now, the thing about both the Slim Jim and the flower pot, or T2LT to give it its more proper name, uh, is that typically they're both vertically polarised antennas. And now for Spradicky, that doesn't necessarily matter because as the E layer ducts, it does tend to bend signals. Uh, so the polarization that the signal starts off at is not necessarily the same polarization that it ends up at the other end of the duct. But I really wanted to try and get a horizontal antenna. Now when we think of a horizontal antenna we often think of either a horizontal dipole with a piece of coax coming up and you get a very bad drawing but one side goes that one side goes there. Or we think of uh, a beam, and uh, here is a completely true reflection of what a beam looks like. Something like that, isn't that? That's actually very horrible. Well, you, you know what I mean. Like you, You've got multiple elements and it takes up a lot of space. Not appropriate for my garden. So, here's what we're going to build today. We are going to build, and I have built one of these in the past, so I know they work pretty well. We are going to build a horizontally polarised but vertically supported delta loop. So when we think of a loop antenna we often think of either a square uh, and uh, depending on where you feed it you can have a different polarisation or you can have a different gain in a particular direction. But what we're going to do today is not have it as a square but we are going to have a triangle, in fact I'm going to use a different piece of paper, we're going to have a triangle. So here is going to be the basis of the loop. Now, the top section up here, I'm going to use a piece of PVC tubing in order to support. I'm going to drill a hole in that PVC tubing uh, in order to put the pole up through the middle of. Uh, and then down here is going to be the feed point. Now, a Delta loop, as I say, you can feed in a few different places. If you feed it at bottom down here, for instance, and you have the horizontal at the top, uh, this will be a horizontally polarised antenna. If you were to feed it, and I forget the exact measurements, but I think if you feed a quarter wavelength up the side, or even in the middle here somewhere, you end up with a vertically polarised antenna. But to keep things simple, I'm going to feed it right at the bottom because I want a horizontally polarised antenna. It also makes building it a bit easier as well because I can run the coax straight down the pole. However, a delta loop is roughly 100 ohm impedance. When we're trying to feed it with coax, it means we need to transform that 100 ohm down to 50 ohms. There are two ways to do that. We could either use a 2 to 1 balance because this is a balanced antenna for the most part. Or we can cheat and not use a two to one balance and instead use a particular length of 75 ohm coax. Uh, so the particular length is based upon the frequency. Now, for the six meter band, we have roughly, and we're gonna talk rough figures here, we have roughly 6.1 meters of a wire that formed the loop and this transmission or um, that's not trans this transformation line if you want uh, needs to be and this will depend upon the velocity factor of your particular coax but usually for most it's 99 centimeters however that is based upon a polyurethane core 
it might be as much as 115 centimeters if you've got more of a foam type core. So it all depends on the velocity factor of the coax. But to be honest, go for 99 centimeters, you're probably not going to be far off. The difference really in terms of what it's going to be at the other end, whether it's going to be 38 ohms or 60 ohms, um, the tuner and the radio is going to cope with that. And even if you're looking at sort of a 1.5 to 1 SWR is the best, that's still pretty good. So 6.1 meters of wire, 99 centimeters of 75 ohm coax in order to do the transformation from the 100 ohm of the antenna down to 50 ohms that we can then feed it with, with our pretty standard uh, amateur coax, things like RG58 or Ultraflex 7 or whatever your particular favorite coax will be. And I think I can build this for less than about 10 pounds. Uh, the uh, PVC pipe uh, I've purchased and that was about two pounds, slightly less than. The uh, wire I happen to have already in stock, but it's a bit of uh, DX10. However, any old wire will do. And then the piece of 75 ohm coax, again, I've already got some left over, came with the house, was up in the attic when I moved in. Uh, so it's not cost me anything in order to get about a meter of, of 75 ohm coax. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're not looking at a particularly large amount of money there either. You might think, how am I gonna join the wire to the 75 ohm and then the 75 ohm to the 50 ohm. Again, your options are numerous here. I'm going to use some chock block because this is only going to ever be a temporary installation. Uh, this is, if I was going to put this up permanently, then I probably wouldn't use chock block. I'd probably use a proper sort of waterproof type connector. Um, but chock block is going to do the job for me because I not only do I want this to be so portable or so easy to install that I could put up in the garden for a few hours and then take it down again. I also want to be able to pack this into the car, um, which is why um, the six meter band is perfect because this length along here needs to be two meters. So you've got roughly two meters on each side. Roughly, if it's a perfect triangle, brilliant. Um, and you can buy from, what uh, bought mine from Screwfix, you can buy a two meter length of a 20 mil overflow pipe. I say it's what, one pound something or other certainly less than two pounds so that will fit in the car quite happily right let's get to building this and welcome to the garden where spring has turned into summer this afternoon um i've put the antenna on the pole so let's have a look at what i've done and i'll just try and explain it to you so across the top is that uh, 20 millimeter uh, piece of overflow pipe uh, it's two meters in length and i've uh, cut uh, or drilled that's the right word drilled a hole in the middle so i can slide it down the pole uh, that hole ended up being about nine millimeters uh, and means that the uh, it sits about halfway down the second section down if you want from uh, uh, on the dx commander pole this is a 10 meter classic pole which i often use for supporting antennas uh, and i ended up chopping uh, i cut the wire about 6.2 meters i've ended up chopping I'm going to say about 15 centimetres, so it's probably about just a smidge over uh, six metres in terms of from the uh, from the very feed point here up, round and back down again. And that is one continuous length of wire. Uh, then we've got 99 centimetres of uh, 75 ohm coax from the uh, join just there to at the second join just there. And then from there downwards, it is just normal 50 ohm RG58. You could use any 50 ohm coax you like. What I love about this antenna is that it's taken me all of about half an hour to do, including uh, uh, including drilling the hole in the in the pipe. And it's no solder. There is absolutely no soldering involved in making this antenna. So if your soldering skills are not particularly brilliant, um, then you don't need to be thinking about soldering on with this antenna. Uh, same because to is obviously true with something like a flower pot depending on how you uh, form the top section of the antenna now in uh, flower pots that i often make i use a length of our uh, dx10 for the very top radiating section uh the same wire that i've used here from from dx commander uh, but uh it's really nice 
Um, on the tune, I'll show you on my uh, my MFJ antenna analyzer. Uh, so this is an MFJ 259, and uh, I was aiming it for the bottom of the band, hence why I cut it long to start with. And I've got a nice resonant point at uh, pretty much exactly the FT8 frequency actually, uh, but it should be okay to cover the entire SSB portion. Um, and if I spin up to the FM section, it's still pretty decent up in the FM section. Uh, the calling frequency is somewhere around there. Uh, so yeah, still pretty acceptable even uh, uh, even up at the FM section. So nice, nice antenna that's going to cover the entire uh, six meter band. Uh, my plan is now is to raise up a bit higher because at the moment it's not that high. It's probably only uh, that base the antenna there is probably about three meters so i'm going to raise it up a lot higher um for a short time and put a th few ft8 calls out and just see how far i'm being heard i have no idea at the moment whether there's spread a key going on or not um there possibly is in which case uh we might go a bit further but you know let's just have a quick test let's just see if we can make any ft8 qsos um using the antenna before i then pack it away again so I'm back inside and uh, I've got the antenna plugged into my 7300, which is just here, just off the screen. Um, but so I'm having a look at uh, PSK Reporter and uh, I'm pretty sure the band is quite flat at the moment, uh, which is not too unexpected uh, to be honest. There was, a little, there was a bit of an opening earlier on today that I was aware of. Uh, there was a nice opening last night um, as I record this, but that is the nature of Spreader Key. It's sporadic. Uh, so I'm going to say that it's fairly flat at the moment. There's a few uh, stations I'm picking up on FT8 and I'm being heard by on FT8 as well. Uh, but I'm basically calling CQ on FT8 um, at 30 watts down a length of coax, which is far too long. Um, but at least it gives me some indication of how well the antenna is working under flat conditions. And I have to say, it's performing pretty well. I'm going to put up a screen capture of... Um, of PSK reporter as it is right now uh, but I'm seeing that I'm being heard as far north as uh, Scotland uh, station sort of just as um, southern Scotland uh, into what looks like Lancashire uh, as well as a whole load of uh, stations sort of in the in the Midlands and then a little bit further south of where I am too so the antenna is definitely getting out, it definitely works. Uh, I'll obviously have to wait to uh, a nice uh, opening to see how well it performs with a DX. But uh, the antenna, which is about seven meters, I think, above the ground right now, is working fantastically well. So for a, uh, a no sold uh, half hour build, um, packable away, because that's quite nice as well, it's very handy. Okay, it's gonna be two meters when it's packed down, but even so, that's still quite portable. Uh, I'd say it's, it's a fantastic antenna. Um, if you're uh, in, if you're going to build one of these, let me know. I'd be really interested to know how you find it. And uh, such a cheap bill of materials, I think uh, uh, you can easily build one of these for. Well, certainly it's cost me less than ten pounds, way less than ten pounds. That was including buying the pipe. Uh, I had to buy a, a ten pack of those little connectors. Um, they come on a, a twelve block strip. I had to buy ten of them. And that was still including that. So I'm going to have loads of those coming out of my ears for, for ages. Um, I'll be interested to know how you get on with it. Um, let me know. Let me know. You could work some sporadic EDX. That'd be fantastic. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you've liked this button, there's a button specifically for that. There's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button as it really does help me out. There is another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73, bye-bye.